Welcome to the Nova web page. Uh, as you are here, you will be able to easily orient. Uh, however, in order to find the scholarships, you press Nova programs and then go to programs for foreign students. As you click on the program for foreign student, you will find a list of programs. Uh, and here we look for the Banach scholarship program. We click here, and this is a fully dedicated place where you can read all the information about the scholarship and many happy faces. <laughs> okay, so let's first of all go to the page called for proposals. Here we can see the announcement of the program, the scope of the call for proposals, um, program description, objectives of the program. Here you can see all of the specifications. Uh, it's worth to read all of that, in my opinion. And here are the dates and deadlines. For you, it's, it's very important. So we can see that this call that is um, going on right now, you can submit the application till the 21st of June. So do not prolong your application. You have only one month. Method of submitting application only in electronic form in the agent ICT system. So we will go there in a second and try to fill in this electronic form together. Language of the application in Polish or in English. I guess for most of you, it will be English language and the maximum number of applications which may be submitted by one applicant is only one. Let's click the link to fill in the application. Okay. And here we have to put our login and password. If you're not uh, registered on the portal, you, you have to register. And we are on the main page. Uh, if you see that it's in Polish, so if you don't speak Polish, you can turn on English language. And here you go. Uh, we are students. If we are students, then we are going to call for proposal to two programs. And we see two open calls. And this one is our choice. So if you see Stefan Banach, it means that uh, this is our form. Fill in the form. So first of all, you need to fill in your nas nationality. So for example, I'm Ukrainian and I will put here Ukraine. Uh -huh. mm, and it has automatically already put my name and last name here. Uh, it's, it, uh, they have the data from the registration form. So when you were registering, you have inserted this information here. Uh, so you need to put your uh, name, last name. Very important that you put it as it is written in the passport. Because even in my language, like uh, sometimes it's not two I's. And the tr official transliteration showed that there should be two eyes. So be careful with that. Put the name as it's in your international passport. Then you need to put your gender, so female, and date of birth. Mm -hmm. So we'll look for the year. Then city where you are, where you were born. This is the basic information that you have to insert in every in every application. Also, according to transliteration, you can also find the transliteration tools um, in the internet, so you can watch how it's written. Here, you have to write your personal information from the passport, the passport number, expiration date, uh, then current address. Where do you live in Poland? Phone number. Email address. I think this everything is very easy. Mm -hmm. mm, Polish diplomatic consular office educated the place of your residence. Uh, so you need to uh, put the which embassy 
is correlating to your citizenship. So, for example, I am Ukrainian. That means that embassy in Kyiv, Kyiv, it's the capital, is uh, adequate to the place of my residence. So, put here embassy in Kyiv. If you are from Azerbaijan, then you have to put here embassy Rzeczpospolita uh, Polska in Baku. If you're from Belarus, you put Minsk. You can also check this information on the internet. But I put here Kyiv because I'm from Ukraine. Here is emergency contact details. You write your name, surname and address of the person to be notified in case of emergency. Everything can happen, so agency needs your information. Uh, phone number of the person to be notified in case of emergency. Don't forget uh, to put the country code in front of it. Uh, email address of the person. Okay, this was the first um, the first pun point where we were inserting data like this basic basic information about us. The second uh, point is going to be about your studies in Poland. So first of all, scientific field of study. Uh, we look for um, what kind of field do we study? Because for Banach scholarship, as I mentioned before, we can choose only from these five fields. Engineering, agricultural, natural field of sciences, humanities, and social field of sciences. Um, it depends what kind of, uh, which country are you from and what kind of uh, degree you take. But please um, take the one which you which you have. For example, I will study engineering technology field. So I entered it here. And here you select what exactly is the study field. So I will select here technical IT and telecommunication. Here you put the preferred university. Yes, bef because before applying to this uh, scholarship, you have made a research and you have found down which kind of university could fit your program. So here is the whole list of Polish universities, of Polish public universities. Uh, so you will be able to check it um, in the research you make before applying for the scholarship. And that's my big recommendation before applying it. You need to know where you want to study. So for example, we want to choose University of Łódź. I want to study in the University of Łódź. Uh, then you need to plan commencement of your studies. Do you want to come for winter semester or for summer semester? When do you want to start your study? I want to start my studies already from autumn. So this autumn, I want to come to Poland and study here. Uh, so I choose winter semester. Winter semester is semester that is um, taking autumn and winter. Um, then we have language of study during the first cycle degree studies. You have only two options or Polish or English. So I choose here English. English. Okay, and the second uh, point is done. We have um, we have told Nava about our plans. Then we are going to education. Here we are going to describe our previous education. You write the name of the university where you have received the first cycle studies. In order to apply for Banach scholarship, you have to you need to have the first cycle studies already done. So, for example, I have ended my bachelor's degree in Kiev um, National Un Kiev National University. Let's say like that. Kiev National University City. Kiev country Ukraine. Faculty and field of study, I think it's um, clear. So we write the faculty of informational technologies. Year of graduation. Uh, if you have already ended your bachelor's degree, then you write which year you have ended it. Um, but if you have not, you can put the planned date of graduation. So, for example, 31st of May this year, I'm graduating from this from this faculty. 
Okay, the next question is, are you currently studying on the last year of first cycle degree studies? Yes. Uh, have you already received the first cycle degree diploma? If I have not ended my bachelor's, then I have not received diploma yet. Uh, so here we say which diploma we receive, bachelor, engineer or other. So I choose my one. The great point, um, average of first first study degree diploma if for this moment you are studying on the last semester of a first cycle degree studies please provide the gpa point for the current period of education uh, gpa point is the average uh, grade you have so you need to insert here your average grade for this semester if you have not yet graduated if you have yet gra uh, already graduating then you just put the gpa from your diploma uh, let's put 4.9, yes. Please provide grading scale, which is applicable in your university. Yes, also very important. So we have five. Depends also on your university. But uh, I do not recommend you to put the false data to this uh, uh, cells because uh, everything is really easy to check by Nala. So be yourself and write the true information. The next point that we are filling in is uh, knowledge of languages. And then we insert our mother tongue. So my mother tongue is Uk Ukrainian language. What languages are you going to use for studying Poland? Here is the moment where you have to decide, are you going to learn Polish language or are you going to study in English? For example, I am going to study in English. And here, the proficiency of English language. So as we have this table here, you can analyze it and then write what's your proficiency. Uh, so for example, in speech, I'm C1 and in writing, I'm B2. Certificate confirming proficiency in English, in English languages. Uh, so here, you will have to write what kind of certificate you have, because in order to participate uh, and study in English language, you have to obtain the certificate, which proves you, which, which proves your level of English language. And most of the universities which are accepting uh, the students um, to study in English languages actually need the certificate. Uh, so you choose, um, for example, I have the uh, Cambridge certificate. So I'll write it here, and uh, here you can see IELTS, at least 5.5 .5 points you need to have from this certificate. Okay, and then let's let's write about our Polish language level. Also, uh, rate yourself in speech and writing skills. So, for example, in speech I have B1, and in writing I have B2. And here um, you have to. Um, if you have, if you have any certificate that confirms Polish language proficiency, you need to write it here, write the name of this certificate. Okay, so slightly we are going to the point 3.3, .3, uh, previous academic or professional stays in Poland to other countries. Mm, so for example, I've been studying in the United States. So we choose here the country. United States of America. Mm, duration date from. You choose the date. I'm going just to choose random dates. Source of financing. Uh, here you need to tell the agency who has financed your study. Were there your parents or maybe any kind of other scholarship you have received? Mm, so. I write here Merit Scholarship, uh, financed by U.S. Department of State. U.S. Department of State. And here you need to write just a few sentences about your practical and professional experience gained during or after studies. So I think it's clear. Then the fourth point, the point that 
need some preparation before applying for before filling in this application. Uh, so we have here um, some information. Add scans of the following obligatory documents. So these documents are obligatory. That means that you cannot apply without inserting these documents. Um, in case of the attachments issued in a language other than Polish or English, please attach the translation in accordance with the announcement of the program. Uh, that's pretty clear. So here we, first of all, insert the scan of a valid passport page with a photo. It's uh, pretty clear. Then the second point is scan of the diploma of completion of the first cycle degree studies in scientific field eligible for the country of the program. Uh, so you just scan your diploma and touch here. More information about the about mentioned document you find at the program announcement 2022. So that was the announcement with, that we were reading before and where I told you there are more details. Okay, so the next point is the count, scan of diploma supplement. So the supplement is the basically the paper that uh, consists uh, that contains also the grades the GPA that you have received during your study. Um, That's very important also for the agency to receive such, such information about you. Um, then the scan of certificate that confirm your knowledge of English language, the one with, that we were uh, inserting a bow, diploma confirming the completion of the university study were taught in English. This is a choice. So you do not you do not have to have this exam if you have diploma from studies in English language. Then, um, if you decide to study in Polish language, then you have to have the scan of the certificates confirming the knowledge of the Polish language at the level of minimum B1. Okay. And then we have the scan of the recommendation letter from the Polish Embassy, non-government organization or university. Uh, recommendation agency, uh, recommendation letter you can get from from your personal experience of of participating of participating. So it could be could be anything. For example, I had a uh, recommendation letter from American House, where I have volunteered before. Okay. And then uh, at the end, we have just to uh, put some agreement points. And so you have to read it carefully for yourself before applying for it and put the agreement points here. There are some of them here. And also information from for agency where you got to know about this scholarship just for the statistics. And here's the moment when you can submit your application and uh, wait for the results. Thank you very much for your attention. Hopefully this material was helpful for you. And I wish you good luck. And remember, if you knock on the door, someone will open it. Try yourself. Good luck.